And Omid's here ready to join us now. Hey there. Are you on mute? Do you hear me? Yep, now we do. Thanks. Sometimes it's yeah. automatic. Sometimes you got to press the button. It's, yeah, uh, today you had to press. The, um, welcome. Uh, your slides are just coming up. Great. A really great extension of what Aliana set up for us about the maturity. And now we'll be digging into serverless with you, Omid. I'll uh, get off the stage and leave you to it. Welcome. Thank you, Mark. Uh, hi there. I'm Omid. I'm a technical leader at... Uh, uh, Solidity Group in France and online real estate platform. And today we're trying to have a look at event driven design and a bit of serverless. Uh, you can join me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or GitHub as you wish. So let's have a look uh, to some principal characteristics of event driven design or EDA, event driven architecture. Uh, as decoupling, and any part of system is fully decoupled and autonomous in this process. And resiliency, any part of system uh, need to its failures and make this part uh, this component in the whole system enough resilient. Reduce complexity or improved complexity, improve complexity in your in a technical perspective, and reduce complexity in a business perspective. Uh, I call them resource complexity. There are adaptable solution. You can change your design by your decision at any time with the minimum effort. And they are preferably stateless. So uh, EDA has three main components or parts as you wish. You can translate it as you wish. Uh, the producer, the router or processor, and the consumer. Uh, we have so many consumers. Let's have a look a bit uh, in <clears throat> each part. Uh, in a central column, uh, the router part, the router part or processor, the it's it's responsible uh, responsible for processing the event and add some um, significant value to the event. Uh, in this part, we try to evaluate the event state and attach a business centric state to the to our event and. They may need dependencies as HTTP calls, REST APIs, microservices, or databases. And at the left-hand side, we have the producer. The producer don't care about your process. The router is independent. Uh, uh, the producer needs just uh, need to respect the API contract that uh, is versioned and Volta commanded. And sometimes they need callbacks, but most of the time, no. It's rare uh, callback needed by the producer. And they're also uh, they're totally decoupled from the other part of system. And at the right hand side, we have the consumers. These consumers uh, officially they're subscribers to the processing part, the router part, and they're sub they're subscribed to receive the event within a specific uh, state. Without that in state, they don't care about that event. Uh, they also need a consumption contract, uh, which is versioned and also well documented. As well as producer, they're totally decoupled from the processing part. They know just the state. And uh, let's have a look at a typical example, an e-commerce example. In our example, we have so many subsystems or components. Uh, the order subsystem product and delivery subsystem. And all the subsystems are working all together to, to let us to obtain a business goal, a value in our, in our business, in our process. But this design has, we have so many possibilities to implement this design. The first one, the legacy one, uh, that's the first one that I know. Most of you know that. The multi example. In my example, I will show you a typical algorithm state machine we use already uh, highly in our monolithic designs. In a state machine, the request, the send the request, the order request, and that all the system will be changed the request. And after, uh, when all the subsystem or APIs or databases, all these parts of system 
have a green status, success status, we are ready to return back to the requester saying, we got that. You're in green estate, 200, 2xx. But uh, if any part of system, like a retail or payment, uh, is partially down, uh, we have a higher dependency. The order system, the requested, don't care about whatever happened in our system. But the a failure in one of the subsystems would uh, impact negatively or requester or business or uh, or end user friendly process. So distributed architecture or SOA, whatever you want to remember uh, in our memory, we have different uh, different. Uh, uh, work for that. Distributed architecture came in play to resolve some of these problems. The first one is dependencies. Distributed architecture, when we talk about distributed design, we talk about two kind of dependencies, the highly coupled dependencies and the loosely coupled dependencies. In our example, we, the order system has two direct dependencies. One loosely coupled dependencies as retail system and the second one is a highly, um, uh, highly coupled dependencies, uh, dependency, which is forex system. If a retail system fails, order system will will not be able to send an asynchronous request without waiting a callback from retail system, because uh, this we solve the dependencies. Uh, of monolithic, but we could we are not able to handle these failures, this kind of failures. And if whole system goes down uh, uh, as retail system, for example, product system, which is a highly coupled dependency, we can do nothing because uh, we're calling the product system and waiting for this response because we need the product information to attach to our request. So how event-driven design uh, came in play to resolve some or all of them, uh, all, of the, uh, all of these problems. In EDA, we, um, we begin with uh, the loosely coupled dependency part. Uh, the or order system uh, has some problematics in the uh, cause of downtime or connectivity with the retail system. Just with implementing or designing an, a broker, a message broker between the two systems, uh, the order system will uh, push that, re, uh, validate that request and push that an event to the broker. And the retail system, as soon as he's uh, up and he's ready to process that, he will come and fetch that event and ask the broker to remove that event at the end of its process. Uh, this is an example of one loosely coupled dependencies. But uh, imagine we have two loosely coupled dependencies. In this diagram, we have in parallel of a retail system, another consumer, another dependency, loosely coupled dependencies as email system. Here, as you remember, I said, retail system will fetch that event and ask the broker to remove the event. If email system, after two seconds, come look for that event, that event is lost. And part of our process is not manageable. So just a finite architecture, a finite design is uh, is just uh, uh, it's just helping us to uh, with a finite uh, design by adding a broker, a public subscribe broker uh, under ownership of order system and two queues separately, each one uh, under ownership of uh, it's a proper system, uh, like one queue for email system, another one for retail system. We could decouple, really, really decouple that part. The order system has the ownership of the event and the publish subscribe and push that event to this broker. And the, the two queues are the subscribers of the publish subscribe. And they will fetch a temporary copy of the of the event if they will process that so email system is independent to say q remove that event for me it's done for me i could treat that and retail system as well uh, but uh till now we try to resolve the highly couple uh, lose the couple dependencies but 
for the higher couple dependencies, as the product system, if any downtime or connectivity or any kind of uh, disaster uh, happen, uh, or the system is under failure. Without queue for the uh, retail system and email system, we could uh, let the order system just be dependent to the product system and he, it don't care, it doesn't care about the other parts. But uh, how we can solve this problem, the highly coupled dependencies? Uh, here we were talking about uh, three of them. The first one is a callback. In the callback design, the requester send the, uh, send the request to the order system. And the order system just get back to the requester and saying that I got your request after validation. And uh, finally, he will call the product system with a synchronous call. The order system will generate a, a token, an identifier for the request execution, or request treatment. And side by side, the request, uh, which will, will be passed to the product system, this token, this identifier will be passed. And product system, whenever he wants, uh, he, he can treat that request, he will send back to the order system with a callback uh, after two seconds, after uh, 500 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, or after 30 minutes, uh, he will come back to the, uh, get back to the order system and say, that's your identifier. And for this identifier, I have this response. And so order system just uh, attach this response uh, based on their uh, its needs. And uh, he will change the status of the execution of the order from stopped or uh, pause to the running or in progress. And he will continue generating an event and pushing to the broker and the retail system will get, uh, get it, uh, fetch it and continue the process. And the second solution is event transfer state. Event transfer state is my preference. And we talked about the fan design. But till now, or final design, uh, subscribers, uh, all of uh, our process for the subscriber to the to the order system, to the broker that is owned by order system. But this time, order system is a subscriber of product system. The product system owns the broker, and um, as a, as we explained, it loses the couple dependency part. The order system is the owner of a queue and uh, subscribe to the public subscribe broker of product system and he will fetch the event, process them, transform them and save them to its local database. So he doesn't need to call the product system. He just needs to look at its local database. It's my preference. And the next a simplest one, the cache system simply make a cache available between your two systems. Uh, the cache system is not uh, is not able to remove all your problems, but really in about eight, eight, um, eighty percent or ninety percent, uh, it can help you. Uh, till now we were uh, we talked about um, <clears throat> different part like um, we talked about uh, uh, we talked about uh, dependencies and downtime and all of this, but we solved the problem of dependencies. But about downtime, we couldn't do anything until now, just by decoupling, by decoupling. But latency in your uh, uh, any investigation when your system is down needs time. So from one minute to 30 minutes to one hour or 21 hour, that's happened on your use case, your architecture, your kind of downtime. So we couldn't help that, uh, resolve that. How we can use serverless to resolve all our downtime? Uh, first of all, let's have a look at the characteristics of serverless. Serverless are auto-scaled. We don't care about horizontal scaling in the best case, you're modern and the vertical scaling as we did in legacy. They're secure, they're auto-managed, they're business-centric. We call serverless is function as a service. They're a small function, so they're highly business-centric and uh, they're stateless. In our problem with email system and retail system, we talked about decoupling queues and we solved the problem, but 
uh, I don't want to forget that the email system was down. How can I avoid the email system to be down? Till now, he's independent to come and in, after investigation, come healthy and come look for that event and process that event. But how we, how we can avoid that? The worst situation is all the system is down. What's happened? We are fully down. So let's have a look how serverless can uh, function as a service can handle that. Uh, instead of having one container is uh, which is running for 20 hours per, uh, per day or uh, having one uh, physical server that is running 20 hours per day, uh, let's decouple or request by one container. In the serverless world, when a request arrives, when an event arrives, we initiate a new function, new container. Basically, the functions are initiated in a container, which is auto-managed, which is ma managed by your cloud provider or serverless or function as a service provider. So uh, you're independent. If your friend's request fails, because the provider is not able to uh, to give you a healthy container, the second one will pass because their uh, their infrastructure is global. So, if their hashtag fell, they will give you another container in another part of the world. So, maybe you have latencies, but you're healthy. So, in email system and retail system as well, the function any event will initiate a new function. And what to know about serverless? We don't have a serverless platform at the moment that will leave us to run a function for two and a half hour or one hour. We are limited. The timeout is limited. So don't do legacy batch processing in a, uh, in a function. Take care of shared context. Any containers after you usage, after termination, uh, when he's again healthy, he will be reused by your system, by your second request, if it's available. If it's not available, we will uh, reinitiate another container, another function. But imagine we are use, if you're sharing a single container. So your shared context, your context, if is not really well managed, well coded, uh, will be shared between you two and take care about that when you're coding your functions. And concurrency, you have a concurrency limitation. So monitor them and alert them and uh, take care of them. And the colder start. The colder start initially is the, um, when you're, you'd ask to have a function and when your function is ready to run your code. So take care about that, monitor that, and experience that. In serverless world, we need exper experiment. We need to experiment our platform, or code, or functions. Uh, we don't have uh, we don't have a really large large uh, possibility. We have to monitor to avoid any incumbent uh, uh, situation in our production. So uh, you. In server uh, for, for your function, you need to define the memory and CPU. Uh, basically, we define the memory, but the CPU is attached to the memory. In the provider documentation, you can find, for example, uh, if I choose two gigabyte of memory, how many CPUs he will give me. There are standards in the documentation, and you can know that. Uh, we talked about EDA and serverless and must be considered part, uh, use the small function as possible and colorate all your full environment. When we decouple uh, one process to uh, 10 processes, you need to pass a request ID, trace ID, or correlation ID to in our system, in the full system, and track them that, and use the centralized monitoring dashboard to be able to track one request, one action, which arrives in your ingestion part, it's processed, it's distributed, and uh, in other uh, other part of your system, for example, your data platform, X, Y. And uh, don't forget to retry your failures and use highly DLQ and uh, use the managed DLQs uh, if it's possible. Keep track of service error. 
I have the uh, the experience with AWS that the Lambda function service was uh, was throttled, was throttling me, but uh, it was a global problem. So monitor the services, monitor or your throttling, monitor your concurrency and all of this. Then. Uh, use serverless if you use highly managed brokers or clustered brokers. Use the serverless if you use NoSQL databases, a partition database engines, or serverless database engines. And uh, use serverless if your context is, uh, you have a well-defined bounded context and avoid that in a monolithic design. Don't uh, repeat your monolithic in a serverless world. Uh, till now, I talk about the uh, event-driven architecture, and now I want I want to simply uh, and as fast as possible uh, show you how we use event-driven architecture and serverless in a group Sology, Sology group in France. Uh, or or lead platform, contact me platform has three components, three base components: the ingestion part, processing part, and distribution part. In the ingestion part, we simply uh, have a gateway, a gateway API, which get the request and uh, trigger a Lambda uh, serverless function. And, and this serverless function uh, validate the request and uh, transform that request to the to item uh, with uh, some adding some index to, for the optimization, uh, NoSQL optimization uh, scenarios, and push that item to the NoSQL database. NoSQL database engine will trigger automatically and another function, uh, push event function. And this push event function, he will look at the, uh, why the trigger happened. It's an update, a new item, or a deletion. And he will prepare the desired event to and push that event to a broker. This is a published subscribe broker. And who is the subscriber of this broker is the or routing part or processing part. The incoming event queue is a simple queue. He's subscribed to ingestion. He gets the event. He will he will trigger a, a serverless function. It's not in my diagram. I didn't have enough space. And this function will uh, trigger a state machine, uh, auto manage a state machine, cloud state machine. And in this state machine, we will uh, uh, enrich or classified. Classified is or uh, real estate announcement on our site. Uh, get the information or customer information and the maturity. Maturity is the data platform that you send us the statistic. This is used in our platform. And finally, he will uh, push that ev the um, evaluated event with a business centric state to another broker, sub again, published subscribe broker. And who is the consumer of this broker is our distribution part. Our distribution part is the uh, most valuable part of the system. When a simple service function is subscribed to the processing part and he get that uh, add, uh, add uh, uh, and he will simply push that to a database. It is or a new SQL lead database, central database. And behind that, we have an API. It's attached with the serverless functions to our database. It's uh, behind that get API. We have identity profile uh, provider. This is used by our external customer to fetch their uh, their leads, their the data. And uh, also in parallel, we have a push system. Or push system, uh, push event function again, service function is triggered by uh, an, or no SQL database aging streams uh, automatically for any insertion or any deletion, and he will push an event to the published subscribe, and or consumers a data system and other internal uh, system for the moment will listen to the broker their subscribe and he will get the events, which is. Uh, we have multiple versions, version one, two, three for the moment, and they will use that as they wish. And thanks Excellent. to being with me. Uh, right. Sorry right. for the little no, delay. You're right. Great. Let's, that's fantastic. Thanks so much, Omid. Um, really fascinating to dig into the uh, architecture and some of the design patterns there. We are running slightly over, so I'll ask you. I'll invite you to leave the stage. But Omid did put up his uh, contact details. You can also reach out to him via. 
the um the stage chat and i'm sure it will be he would love to uh continue the discussion